Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to state the elements in NPK fertilizers. You should then be able to describe how the compounds in NPK fertilizers are produced. And finally, you should be able to compare the industrial production of fertilizers with their production in a lab. And all of this is for triple chemistry students only. Now, fertilizers are critical for modern farming, and that's because they replace the elements which have been taken up by plants. A really important group of fertilizers are called NPK fertilizers. NPK fertilizers contain compounds of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Compounds containing these elements improve agricultural productivity. In other words, they help plants to grow larger and also more rapidly. Now, NPK fertilizers are produced in large industrial facilities such as this one. Here, a variety of different raw materials are processed together to produce the exact fertilizer required. NPK fertilizers are formulations of different salts, and we looked at formulations in a previous video. These salts contain the required elements in the percentages needed by the plants. So in this video, we're going to look at how the different compounds in NPK fertilizers are produced. And we're going to start by looking at compounds of nitrogen. The main compound of nitrogen in NPK fertilizers is ammonium nitrate, and that has the formula NH4NO3. To make this, we use ammonia, which is produced by the harbour process, and we looked at that in the last video. We can use the ammonia to produce nitric acid. We then react the nitric acid with more ammonia to make ammonium nitrate. The potassium in NPK fertilizers comes from the salt potassium chloride or potassium sulfate. And both of these compounds are mined from the ground and they can be used directly without any further processing. Okay, I'm showing you here phosphate rock being mined from the ground. Now phosphate rock has to be chemically processed before being used in fertilizers. We're going to look at how phosphate rock is treated with nitric acid, sulfuric acid and with phosphoric acid. This does contain a lot of detail and you do need to learn it. Treating phosphate rock with nitric acid produces phosphoric acid and calcium nitrate. Phosphoric acid contains phosphorus, but we cannot add this directly to plants, so we neutralize it with ammonia. This produces ammonium phosphate, and that can be used in NPK fertilizer. Now, if we treat phosphate rock with sulfuric acid, then we make a mixture of calcium phosphate and calcium sulfate. This mixture is called single superphosphate, and again, we can use this in NPK fertilizers. And finally, if we treat phosphate rock with phosphoric acid, then we make triple superphosphate. And once again, this can be found in NPK fertilizers. Okay, now in your exam, you could be asked to compare the production of fertilizers in industry with their production in a lab, such as in a school. So we're going to finish by looking at that. We're going to look at the production of ammonium nitrate, and this is produced by reacting ammonia with nitric acid, and that's a neutralization reaction. In the school lab, we would use dilute solutions of ammonia and nitric acid. That's to make them safe to work with. In industry, the ammonia would be used as a gas and the nitric acid would be concentrated. Now, this is much more dangerous as the reaction is very exothermic. This means that the heat produced has to be safely removed. This heat is then used in later stages. In the lab, we produce crystals using a water bath and a Bunsen burner like this. This requires a lot of heat energy. However, in industry, some of the energy for evaporation is provided by the exothermic reaction we saw earlier. Finally, in the lab, we can only produce a small amount of ammonium nitrate in one go. This is called a batch process. In industry, the chemical is produced by a continuous process, and that means that thousands of kilograms can be produced easily. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on fertilizers in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.